Thank you for staying with us. The Imo State governorship tussle is certainly not ending anytime soon as members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have taken to the streets to protest the Supreme Court's judgment which sacked Emeka Hiedor as a governor of Imo State. Now, the party's national chairman, which is a condos, Atiku Abubakar's running mate in the 2019 presidential election, Peter Obi and other principal members were part of the protest. Is there really any need for this? And joining us to discuss this still in the studio with me is legal practitioner Noble Obasi and also political analyst Babashola Adegbuji. Did we see this protest happening? Uh, yes, I saw the protest happening. Okay. As, uh, I knew, because uh, I was following uh, the Imo State uh, um, election, uh, tri uh, election petition right from uh, the first instance okay. of the tribunal to up to the Supreme Court. And if you go to Imo State, you get the feel that uh, the people really want in here they have to be in the system. And uh, the people have okay, so people have really looked at the traction of the of the uh, of the case, how you know the how the case was going and mm. they you know they, they thought that okay it might go the way. And what gave people the most worry was the fact that someone that uh, came forth, not second, not third, but fourth, was you know, declared as the governor by way of addition of several votes. So naturally, people would want to protect. So I saw it coming. I knew they were going to protest because they feel that that wasn't uh, the mind of the people. Well, uh, just in addition to what he said, um, it's normal for people to protest. But it's just unfortunate that the judgment came that way as a result of, uh, can I call it, the negligence of the, uh, the lawyers to the former governor, who, in one way or the other, did not do what they should have done right from the beginning. What should they have done from the well, beginning? Well, um, if we look at the beginning, there was an error by the electoral officers okay. who did not count yeah. and cancelled. Um, from antecedents, we have been told that electoral officers do not have any right to cancel any election. It did not count. This man took it to tribunal, the present man now there. Uh, Uzodima. Hope Uzodima. Yeah, Hope Uzodima yeah. went to tribunal. It was not considered. There was no cross petition by the lawyers to um, head to her. Went to court of appeal, court of appeal to it, and this. And the man went to Supreme Court. I don't, I don't want, I'm not interested in every other case. Mm. This is what I am interested in. I have been crying that this is my stronghold. And as a result, the council 386 polling unit that belongs to me with over 200,000 votes. And the Supreme Court asked, mm. did you cross-examine this uh, petition? Yes. And there was no evidence or any fact produced by the lawyers to hear her. And the Supreme Court based their judgment on that particular fact. And one thing we should always know, whenever you go to Supreme Court, it is your prayer that the Supreme Court will look at. That's number one. Number two, you don't go to Supreme Court and you expect the Supreme Court to start counting the, the ballot papers <laughs> there. What they do is, okay, the man said 200,000, so we agree 200,000. And I'm very sure that that 200,000 is either it is more than the number of registered voters or even more than the accredited voters. So without looking at anything, they considered it. And they said, okay, 200,000, we accepted, we added it. Whether it is lawful, whether it is legal, I don't know. But what I see, what I uh, uh, saw during the, uh, well, the proceeding is what I have made mention of. Yes. So that is just my point. No, but you want to react to that? Okay, so um, I'm, not, I'm not part of the legal team of uh, um, former governor in yes. Idioha. Well, however, I would want to think that uh, one of the reasons why uh, his legal team uh, did not raise the issue, uh, which, uh, uh, would, which won the case for uh, Hope Uzodima, would be that uh, there, there was a, a previous decision which, uh, which says that. Uh, you know, for all in in all the polling units, okay, that um, if um, a presiding officer, okay, that no, for you to admit any from EC, I think EC eight, okay, so 
for you to admit it, um, it must be signed by the presiding officers. Okay, so they relied on that because in in Uzodima and the, in the present Uzodima and Ihedi Oha's case, it's a police officer, you know, that he called as a as a witness to tender those uh, forms as evidence uh, to test the, prob the probative value. So I would imagine that. They, they relied on the law, which says it must be pres the presiding officer. But then they neglected the fact. So they thought a police officer coming forward wouldn't you know, add anything to, to the substance of the case. But then it hurt them badly. It hurt them badly. But, but the, 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 let, me, let, me, let me take your, what your reaction was. Doesn't it come out as a root shocker, um, the voiding of Emeka Hiodua's um, governorship um, candidacy as governor of Imo State? Did, did it come to you as a root shocker, as the yes. pronouncement by the Supreme Court? Yes, it came to me as a root shocker because uh, I, was, I, was, I was thinking that um, even if they would uh, want to um, add those, uh, those votes, those uh, cancelled votes, say those votes from 388. Yes. They should go a step further to count those votes, to make sure it tallies with the total number of uh, 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 registered, registered voters, and accredi accredited, and accredited voters. voters. Yeah. Exactly. So if you if they if they if they had gone a step further to do those things, they would know that uh, thorough justice has been done to the election. So everybody will now sit down and be happy and have some coffee. But then, Supreme Court just ruled on that. <laughs> that three eight eight polling that the votes from the three eight I think it's three eight 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 six polling units should be counted and added it onto the existing vote. And in some quarters, it was seen that those votes added, uh, you know, surpassed the number of registered voters. Yes. So it's an anomaly. Well, exactly because you are a lawyer. So I mean, if the evidence, if the evidence provided is is sufficient and adequate. Then but was the Supreme Court, was the ruling, was, would you think it was an unfair ruling? Okay, so don't forget what I said earlier on. I said the Supreme Court didn't go a step for that to uh, perhaps, uh, you know, count the votes to, you know, find out whether it's commensurate with uh, uh, what we had on ground. Yes. But then, but then, having seen that, um, well, since they didn't add it, and then, um, you know, from, you know, the public, uh, they've done their mathematics and they realized that this, this, this was what happened. So because it's the final arbiter of justice in Nigeria, they cannot overrule themselves again. But then, there could still be judicial review of their decision. And what would that lead to, a judicial review? Yeah, so if for, for, you, to, um, for you to go through that route, you need to um, make sure that you give sufficient evidence to establish that uh, uh, there is a serious injustice being done and there is a material error in their decisions. So for example, if the opposition comes out to say, in the 386 polling units, you say, we have 200,000 votes. And the total number of voters in you know, Imo State is uh, perhaps uh, 300. And we had existing uh, 150. If you add 200 plus 150, it gives you 350. That means it has surpassed the total number of um, registered voters. I think Supreme Court wants to hear that side of the argument. Bachelor, any thoughts on this? Well, I'm not a lawyer, yeah. but um, what I know this, what I know that, that uh, the Supreme Court did was just to agree with Uzondima that 200,000, okay, no question. Since these guys have refused to do what they have to do, and uh, we agree with you that it's 200,000, go ahead. So is that, is that an oversight on the side of the Supreme Court? What should have been the due diligence by the Supreme Court? Well, and no. are, they, are they expected to have done that? Yes. Okay. So, an oversight? Yes. It could be an oversight, and it could be political. Which of it do you think is more of, Obashola? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't say. I can't say, okay. because who am I to question the Supreme Court? Yes. <laughs> okay, now, the, 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 the protests all over the place, and this protest might take place in other states in Nigeria. Um, over the weekend, there were protests and demonstrations in Imo State. Yes. And, um, the national chairman of the PDP, Uche Secundus, took yes. to the streets with some um, political figures to yes. protest the Supreme Court's ruling. Um, is this like, for them to reverse their, their, their judgment, is this like looking for a needle in a haystack as it is right now? I don't think so. Okay. So I think um, they want to create an awareness that uh, Supreme Court, they can't come and uh, you know, do injustice and go scot-free. That in as much as... Um, Everyone knows it's injustice, but this one, you won't want to go scot-free. Even though 
we really okay. So we don't know whether the Supreme Court would um, overrule itself. We don't know whether it would. Uh, Has there been any case in in history where the Supreme Court overruled uh, its judgment? I think so. It's an old case. Okay. Yeah, but then um, so but the most recent one was Andrew Bar. Sometimes ago, but then the Supreme Court held that no, they cannot overrule themselves anymore. That's uh, that's the most recent. But it's been a, a long time ago. But then it's very difficult. But like I said earlier on, if they go to the route of the, a, a, a judicial review of the decisions, you know, stating certain factors, the Supreme Court might listen to them. But in terms of uh, the the protest, they have every right to protest. And um, the tempo in Imo State as regards the election is. Uh, it's a bit tense because everybody thinks yes. that everybody feel everybody everyone feels that uh, injustice has been meted out to these people, and I I totally understand you know why they um, why they are reacting that way because APC didn't win any seats in Imo states, and people are wondering. I mean, to to every reasonable individual, you think to yourself, how would a governor whose party never won a seat, in, how would somebody whose party never won a seat have? You know, be the governor based on the total number of votes. It was happened in Nanabra and Abga, we should not forget, in 19, in 2004, okay. when this man came to became the governor. Yes. Yes, it okay. was happened. Okay, I, I get okay. it, but in contemporary Nigeria now, where people, where people are, okay, just take a look at Imo State, for example. Excuse me, Imo State is a, is a, a southeastern state, and you know, Nigeria is a, a, is a bit divided in terms of political inclination. So you see the south, south, you know, align a bit to the PDP, which yes. they feel is a party that could give them what they really want. Yes. So in in southeast, it's 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 where an APC might win certain electoral positions. Right. But it's very that, okay, we're, we're, we're getting pressed for time. Let, okay. Let's quickly analyze and look at critically the, the security situation and days to come in Imo State as a whole if, if the protests and demonstrations should continue. Okay. Um, what, what is the security going to be like, the governance of the state? And do you think this might make it very hard for Emeka Hilda to settle in as, I mean, as the governor right now? I mean, that you mean uh, hope, uh, Uzo hope, hope is to my beggar okay. pardon, yes. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't think um, it's, it's the protest would go violent like that. Because at some point, Emeka, don't forget, Emeka, um, um, uh, Hope Uzo Dima is also uh, an indigenous of Imo state. Yes. So, I mean, at some point, the people, would, uh, if, the, if uh, the Supreme Court, you know, doesn't do anything. The people will come, will come back and you know relax and and uh, and accept their fates because Hope Uzodema is not a, it's not a stranger. It's still one of it's still one of it's still an Imo state indigenous. Okay. So at some point, well, yeah. shall I, any thoughts on this? I want to wrap well, up this um, if 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 the protest continued, my little Hanaki, and I think uh, something has to be done. So I'm not saying to stop it, to control it. You get because if you are not careful, yes, it's a peaceful protest. Uh, we have some thoughts that might want to make use of that. Uh, as and an there are always cases of you know every protest being hijacked. Yeah, you know, yeah by talks, there's every yes. possibility yes. that could happen. Yes, that's why I said in the protest, get security. We will wait in and control whatever that is not uh, to prevent any hijack yeah. by any uh, miscreant who could use it for their own advantage. Yeah, or just unfortunate, it has happened. And um, the protest, it for me is for awareness. I doubt if the Supreme Court will reverse his judgment. judgment. Baba Shola Digbuyi and Nobel Basi, thank you for being part of Plus Politics this thank evening. You. And thank you for your in-depth contribution. Thanks for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now. And when we return, I will give you my take. Stay with us. The national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adam Soshomele, has criticized the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for lacking the moral capacity to criticize the nation's judiciary. Oshomele said Atiku Abubakar should be reminded of his past statements and comments, aired by several media outlets, and thus cannot criticize the conduct of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. When I watch uh, the former presidential candidate, former vice president, Atiku Abubakar talking about Nigeria democracy in danger, making a substantiated allegation about interfering with the judiciary. I said Atiku is the least competent person to so speak. 
I think what Bubaka is on record as having manipulated INEC and judiciary to remove Hashidu, who was elected the Bauchi on a AMPP platform Gombe. because, Gombe. yes, Gombe. Gombe. Gombe, because at the end of the result, his boss, uh, former president Urusegu Obaso just said, Atiku has lost his base. He lost his senatorial seat, and now he lost his own uh, governorship in his own state, and he lost so much in the uh, northeast. Atiku, in response, as you will remember, manipulated all institutions such that Prof Professor Jibri Aminu, who is already on record, and I speak with authority on this, because we have the newspapers. He had already congratulated the man who defeated him as a senator. Bad examples cannot be the basis for making progress. We are not about to copy him. But it's important that we remind Nigerians that talking about electoral fraud, talking about manipulating the institutions of democracy, that Atiku cannot be the advocate. And I think the media, whenever you report us, report what we have said before so that the readers can make up their mind about the value to place of the statement that we make. The national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adam Soshomele, has criticized the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for lacking the moral capacity. And here is my take. Is the Yoruba Council of Elders, the YCE, right in asking Tinubu to take a position on Amotekun? Well, whether they're right or wrong, I think he cannot continue to be quiet at this point in time. He's a leader and can't afford to be neutral on this. Also, could the allegation by YCE that Tinubu is yet to speak because of his alliance with the North and the promise of the presidency come 2023 be the reason why he refuses to state his position that will put him in bad books of Asorok? That remains to be substantiated. But Tinubu's silence doesn't help the ordinary people of southwestern Nigeria who see him as their leader. I believe he has to take a position on Amotekun because it will benefit the entire southwest, of which he is an influential leader. Tinubu's silence is perceived to embolden those who are against Amotekun and give them the audacity to speak against it and do whatever it takes to make sure Amotekun doesn't come into being. And as for the members of the PDP and their supporters expressing their displeasures by protesting against the Supreme Court's judgment, I think it is a step in the right direction because finally they have decided to wake up and do their duty as opposition party. But then, Uche Sekondas asking the Supreme Court to reverse his judgment seems like a misplaced call. The tax ahead of the PTP is to wake up and be an opposition party indeed, hold the president accountable and make sure that they don't protest only when their party interest is threatened. I hope this shakes them into doing their job as an opposition party in order to protect Nigeria's fledgling democracy. Thank you for staying with us today. Plus Politics continues tomorrow, same time. Have a good evening.